Good morning, traders, and welcome to the Bookmap Live Trading Webinar. This is Bruce at Bookmap. Uh, we'll do some live forward-looking analysis here. Uh, this is the free education you get with Bookmap. Uh, and, uh, well, actually, it's free for all at the moment uh, since the beginning of the year here. Uh, so we're going to go through uh, live forward-looking analysis. We have an educational course that you can watch uh, and then apply it uh, in this webinar. That's, that's our goal here. Uh, read the current market and give insight to where price is going to go. This is not hindsight education. Uh, and then we also have live trading uh, with JTrader, Stocks Trader tomorrow. And then Thursday we have Scott Pulsini. So come for those. Uh, they will go through live trading. Uh, it is in demo mode, but then you can apply what you've learned uh, from their method of trading. All right, so risk disclosure and general disclosure, uh, all bookmap limited materials, information, and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. The risk disclosure, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, good morning, everybody. Uh, and um, let's jump in here. Uh, JTrade will be tomorrow. Uh, the recordings for these videos, uh, they're on our YouTube channel under live streaming recordings. You can see them here. Uh, so uh, uh, if you'd like to uh, uh, watch them, uh, uh, please, uh, you know, add your comments and, uh, and like them if, if, uh, if, if you like them. Uh, so uh, hopefully we're creating some really good content for you guys. That's our goal. All right, so, uh, all right, let's take a look at the S&P. We're going to kind of do a little bit of a recap um, uh, just after we read the uh, current market here. Uh, traded uh, down into this 4460 area here uh, into high liquidity, as you guys can see, actually here and here. Uh, a little bit lower here, and look at the buyers coming right back in. Now, this is a low volume pullback right now, but we're looking for them to try to trade back up to where it dropped from here in the structure. Okay, it's all, almost there already. So uh, that's kind of a no brainer. We, you know, mark up our structure in here, uh, looking for breaks of that structure uh, and new uh, uh, areas of structure to be created. Okay, there's another one up here. It might come all the way back up to this 70 level or 70 liquidity up here as well. This is where it dropped from. All right, so uh, we, we look at these levels in here, not only the uh, uh, one at 44.65, but also this kind of 44, it's really 70. Um, and uh, and then, you know, we can also take a look here. Maybe, maybe it's even can push a little bit further uh, back up to this kind of high volume node up here. Uh, at um, uh, 73 or so uh, and uh, see if the, the buyers really try to push it, uh, you know, and try to knock some, uh, hit some stops or something. But you can still be bearish uh, even if it comes up into that area here. Okay, so uh, we're on the lookout for that right now. Uh, this is just, uh, it's pretty strong buying coming in. Uh, so uh, we might just have a another double distribution day here or uh, you know, kind of like yesterday, but uh, uh, anyway, let's go over um, a few things. Let's look at our higher time frame here. This is what we drew up yesterday. Uh, our daily chart on the uh, left here, uh, and you can see we we're, we don't really see too much activity in there on the daily. Uh, then on the um, and oh, hold on here. Why is this uh, okay? Okay, it's correct. Uh, all right, and then uh, on the hourly here in the middle, um, we've been looking at these kind of levels up and up in here, and we're you can see we're bouncing around uh, uh, these levels here, uh, and uh, draw, probably draw a new one in here. Okay, right around this area here. Okay, let's do that. Finally, getting this down, forty-four, forty-three. Okay. And we'll get rid of some of these uh, maybe maybe later. But uh, uh, and this is what I drew up yesterday here. We're kind of looking for some of these swings here. Um, I did not draw the swing here because uh, 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 this was kind of a little bit little bit higher time frame. Um, and uh, but that this also the the swing that we saw uh, right around this forty five twelve. Uh, as another possible re return to that, we saw we saw the move up to there. 
Uh, so I, I didn't mark it up, but what it did, uh, what price did all day yesterday, so we kind of went back and forth and back and forth, and I think we ended the webinar, and then it finally broke. Uh, where did it break? Okay, so we kind of drew up this zone in here, uh, and it went a little bit below it here, uh, and uh, it came back down into this area in here. Now, I'll have to put in less candlesticks in here, I think, um, and uh, we can take a look here. Uh, and go back yeah see see this little area in here okay so what we see is uh there's a couple little areas um uh consolidation here drop okay it comes back up into that consolidation area here you see some wicks in here and then that broke out okay so back down into here is really kind of where that that you know it it broke from uh, somewhere, you know, it, it, this whole kind of area is a zone in here, but you can see the wicks as well. This is where there's buyers in here for this move that uh, went to the upside. So let's now go forward. Uh, and that's kind of where it went. Uh, and it retested uh, the wick down here. So a little off on that zone. Uh, but I just want to show you guys like the, the structure uh, and uh, start to understand um order flow around some of these levels in here and we're going to be looking at the same type of levels uh in bookmap uh as as the higher time frame here so let's see that's around 4480 right all right okay and uh, let's move forward now okay so yeah spike spike kind of below it here uh, and then uh, moved uh, back up, uh, spiked up above the swing here, and then uh, this session we're right back down. Okay, now pretty wicked stuff here. Uh, you know we see the big, big uh, uh, pin bars in here. Uh, another spike below this 4480, and then we're back up into the range. Look at the the, the pins here, the wicks on on both sides, right? So again, looking for kind of a you know. Uh, back and forth session in here uh, for the moment right now and just keep an eye out for our higher time frames uh, so uh, you know I, I really like this 44 40 area down here uh, and that's where we see some previous wicks on the hourly okay so uh, uh, just to get our levels in here of understanding order and it really is order flow on these time frames it is the same stuff we're looking at uh, in here uh, as we will when we get into the live market and book map here. Um, all right, so uh, let's take a look here. So we came up to our, our area up here at 70 so far. Okay, and they're still buying here. All right, so uh, uh, let's see if they can uh, continue or is this going to be a new range in here? Okay, so uh, uh, we're bearish here uh, on this move. Okay, even with this this kind of uh, uh, this buying and this move on up in here, um, Good morning, Tom. Um, let's see here. Uh, any other questions? Um, okay. Uh, yeah, this is where you comment, uh, Nick, um, in these live webinars. Okay. So you'll have to kind of pop out. Yeah, okay, you got it. You, you pop out that uh, um, the streaming, uh, and then, uh, then you can jump in here with the... Um, uh, with the with the text in the text channel. All right. So let's see if we get more sellers in here. Or are we going to get buyers in here? Let's take a look. All right. So it uh, looks like we got getting some sellers in here, looking for them to trade it back down here uh, into uh, 63, uh, and then also maybe uh, down in here to 61. All right. This is where it broke from here. Right. This is a nice little level to to draw up. To be honest. Right. Right in here. Uh, there's kind of a zone. Um, I, I kind of like it here. Uh, let's see if the looking for sellers to try to take it back down into uh, that area right now. Okay. Uh, another one here is kind of 60. This is kind of where it broke out from. Uh, you know, somewhere right right around here. Uh, and um, and then we got the swing lows uh, as well uh, to take a look at. Uh, good morning, Dove. All right. And Alan. Um, is there a way to see a dome and book map? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, let me let me show you that. I'll I'll demo that. Um, but um, uh, we we want to go through the live uh, analysis in here. Uh, that's really what we're here for. Yeah. Uh, and uh, 
okay so wow we're, we're finding some buying interest down here even though these guys didn't even stay in the order book right so uh, you, you can see they're they're pulling that liquidity in here and and we found some buyers nonetheless okay, and they, they took it right back up here all right so All right, looks like we're going to go for 70, 70 liquidity here. Okay, there's a little skew in the order book here. Uh, there, actually, this is something that um, I, I wanted to cover as well. Now, it is hindsight um, uh, is from yesterday, but uh, let me uh, let me go through it here. Um, it's I just think it's important uh, to get the point across. All right. Okay, so this is yesterday's uh, uh, screenshot from uh, yesterday's action. Uh, and the uh, webinar was back and forth in here, and then we finally had the break. Um, uh, just when the, always when the webinar um, ends. Now, this is actually something really good to cover, though. W why did we get the break at this time? Okay, it's because this was after the European close. Okay, so the, the market, you, you'll see this in many different markets. So we're talking about market timing and order flow here. Uh, obviously, you have the, the overnight sessions. You have the cash open. Uh, uh, then you have the um, uh, London close or, or European close. Uh, you have the bonds close at, at 3 p.m. East Coast time. Uh, you know, you'll see markets move after that. Uh, you know, there's uh, all sorts of different timings of the market. Um, and uh, we, it, it, or the you know, or the the close, uh, we've seen some excellent moves at the close. Um, you know, some uh, some moves to the downside, and then some you know really uh, rocket moves to the upside or uh, opposite direction uh, after the close, okay, or around the close. Um, some really really big moves, uh, it, pretty pretty incredible. All right. Anyway, that's market timing. I did want to mention that, but what I want to mention here is. We, we talked about order book skew the other day and uh, one of the uh, comments in YouTube here let me bring it up um, was uh, it was um, uh, what was it it was order book skew uh, yeah imbalances uh, here it was this one all right I'll put it into the chat here uh, for you guys uh, but uh, the um, uh, we were looking at you know very low time frames uh, and, uh, and and covering this in here like uh, um, you know how to uh, look for these order book skews uh, and then and then look to see how the aggressor reacts to it uh, and uh, we didn't even have volume on the chart and that was a very volatile day or back and forth day uh, and it was working just you know very very well because the market was reading the uh, the the order book. Uh, here's how you can read it on higher time frames. Okay, here's a break of it here, right? Um, and um, uh, then then it went into a range here, high liquidity here, high liquidity down here, and uh, the range is actually pretty bullish in here because like uh, we don't even get a move back down into this area. So we got some buying pressure in here. They even traded into this liquidity here. Then what happened? Look at the skew. See how this guy pulled that liquidity, and it's it's likely the same player pulled it, added it higher, pulled it, added it higher. We're having order book skew here on a higher time frame. This is well zoomed out. We're looking at the entire day here. You can see these order book skews on these higher time frames. Look for them. Look for the reaction of the aggressors uh, as well. Uh, if we get buying pressure, uh, we're looking for them to break. Uh, some of these levels and to, to continue higher uh, into other areas of high liquidity, which is exactly what it did here and here. Now, this order book skew uh, became a little less aggressive uh, after kind of a big move to the upside. Uh, and then here's where we get the reversal. When they trade into and through this high liquidity here that's been uh, adding and pulling higher here. Okay, We look for... Uh, even on low time frames, we'll see it. We'll see it in this webinar, uh, and then we look for the um, 
uh, you know, maybe a, a low volume pullback or just just continuation at that point. Uh, you, you, you'll just see the sellers come in and just knock it down. Then we're looking for our previous kind of pivot areas uh, and swings uh, and, and also uh, large transactions like in this area here. It, it didn't even matter here. They just blew right through it. Okay, all of these levels, they went to the low here. So they, they hit the, the high here, the high of the day here, knock some stops out up there. Um, and um, uh, also uh, hit, hit the low of the day here and then came right back into the range here. All right. So I just wanted to cover that um, as well, uh, how to use and, and see order book skew and use this to your advantage. Okay, Because you'll see it on all time frames. Uh, and this is a really, really nice feature here. All right, it'll it'll give you a, a bit of a uh, bit of an edge there. Um, all right, so enough said. Uh, let's see what happened here. All right, we got our breakout uh, and interesting stuff. And uh, we um, okay, we said seventy three here. Uh, they went up even higher into some of these swings up here. Interesting, interesting move here. Uh, we are down below this cluster right now. Or just add it okay and we do see a stop run here we do also see some iceberg uh, selling up in here pretty pretty significant for today uh, we see some action on the bid here okay what is the reaction by the aggressors all right so you know we're they're, they're, they're buying, so let's see if they can come back up and test in 75, 76 here. Uh, let's see, when does liquidity attract price and when does it repel it? How to know the difference? A great, great question, All right? So higher time frame liquidity is already digested by the uh, uh, players, okay, in, in, the, in the auction. Uh, you know, we, we know there's high liquidity in some of these levels already. Uh, and the market has already adjusted itself to that. Uh, what we want to see is that lower time frame liquidity uh, and what happens in there. So typically, uh, the higher time frame, longer term liquidity, the market knows it. So it knows it, it can find buyers down here. And these typically, you know, you know, act like magnets um, because that's where you know traders can get filled. You'll see it more, I think, in stocks. Uh, you'll see how, like, uh, it's advertising. Uh, it's saying, like, uh, well, you know, I I'm down here. If you if you want to get, you know, uh, chase after it and, and push price down into here, this is where, you know, we, we can all be happy, uh, basically, uh, here in Tesla. Uh, and then you can see that uh, uh, these guys are getting filled, and there's still more buying pressure. Uh, they went through it here. But uh, uh, here's, here's your short-term liquidity here. Look at that. Uh, so we have 10,000 shares in there uh, just after the drop. Okay, and looks like buyers want it, want it though. Looks like they, they're going to try to go for it here. Let, let's see if they, they transact into it. And no, no. Uh, so uh, likely we'll trade right back down to 905 here. Okay, and uh, if we get more selling down here, which we did not, we see buyers here. Okay, if we get more selling down here though, then we can get down to 904. Okay, there's some exhaustion there. Let's see if we get some selling in here. Looking for sellers around 9, 905.50. And then I want to see them break into 905 and 904. Okay, due to this new liquidity coming in here, that seems to be repelling it now. Okay, that's how to, that's how to read it. Okay, what is the reaction to this event? Uh, and uh, do, do buyers want it? Uh, does it repel them or are sellers engaged? And they see that and it's just like, uh, yeah, we're going to, you know, uh, uh, take it take it down into other levels of high liquidity. Okay, it's a skew in the auction. It's like all of a sudden this heavy supply came into the order book or into the market. Uh, and what's the reaction? So this is setting up really beautifully here for a move down. Okay. So we have uh, the sellers, exhaustion, 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 selling. They should be able to hit it here, 905. And they should be able to blaze through that and try to get it back down to 904. 
Okay, there's 4,000 here, and there's another 4,000 down here at 904. You can see they're a little little timid here to trade right into it, though. They should they should take it on and trade through it. Okay, this is where we're looking for another skew. Maybe this guy pulls and adds lower. Or maybe we see new liquidity come in here at 906. And here here we go. Here's our answer. So, yeah, this was uh, they didn't even they didn't even trade into this down here. Okay, which was setting up really nicely, really nicely here. Uh, we have all this exhaustion here. We see sellers in here. They're making slightly lower lows. They should be able to take this on. And then someone came in, a, a, a major buyer just came in and just moved the price right back up to, to take on these guys here at um, that those 10,000. And they, they traded. Okay, look at the, uh, uh, the column here. Let's get rid of this one. Okay, we see 10,000 right here. All right, so that this guy got what he wanted. He wanted to be a seller. The buyers took him on. Anyway, so yeah, typically this repels it, but in this case, we saw some interest here, and then they're starting to not be very interested at all. But the a buyer came in and, and wanted it. Uh, likely just one big player. Uh, that that moved it on up there and took that on. Okay, here we go again though, looking for them, looking for, again for these sellers now. Now that that event is done, let's see if we can get our sellers now down here. Nope. See it? See how this is repelling, right here. See how the high liquidity comes in and what happens? We found buyers. It, it repelled them away from it. This is new liquidity in here. Okay. That's what we want to know or engage. Now, I, I, I still think it looks like these guys are still going to, it's not really pushing them away. looks like they'll trade uh, this 906, and they may trade the 90550 because price is kind of hanging out here. This is what we want to want to gauge in here. See, see how, like, boy, it's just moving quickly here. Um, this liquidity came in here, then it repelled it, okay, and here it, it, as well. Anyway, so it's it's to read the aggressor's behavior uh, to this supply and demand. All right, does higher time frame liquidity stay in the book? Yes, it usually does. Uh, shorter term is is not necessarily a spoof, but it could be. Spoofing is a very uh, particular uh, order flow phenomenon. Uh, and and the pulling, um, but uh, so there we go. So that now now it did repel it, and they kind of moved it up. Now this is I, I think they're gaming it in here. Uh, we can see how you know get get people to buy, uh, now get them short or stuffed. Uh, you know this would be J traders stuff into the uh, 905 904, and let's see if they can continue. Boy, I, I like the structure here, so I'm kind of maybe maybe this is it. Maybe 902. Uh, but if we get enough selling to go through that area, then 900 looks just great. That was tricky uh, in here, especially this guy that took him on here. But uh, yeah, the um, that's typically the way it works. Uh, let's go back and look at our S&P here. Uh, all right, so we got up to... Um, we didn't make a higher high here for the day, uh, and now we see the selling coming in here. All right, so they're trying to move it away here from point of control uh, or most traded level here, and the volume looks good. So looking for them to try to trade it down to our lower levels here. Uh, the swing here at 63, looking for that, looking for sellers to continue, uh, and then also uh, 60 here uh, as well. Okay, maybe we can get all the way back down to 44.50 here. We're getting a pullback right now. Okay, look for the pullback back to 70. Okay, again, market structure. Okay, going through the structure here. And then a new a new area here. Okay. 
Here's new liquidity, new supply coming in, and we're finding sellers. All right, we're finding a little more supply here and uh, still finding sellers. So let's see the let's see the move lower here. Looking for these guys to pull here, maybe more adding more on the offer. And looking for a, a, a push down into 62 and 60 here. Okay, buying, buying coming in here, um, just at the bottom here. Interesting. All right, so another trappy day here. Uh, nonetheless, though, the, even though we see the buying coming in here, you know, I mean, this is still a pullback. Sellers took control here, right? So this is where we you, you don't, you know, want to get caught up in this kind of stuff. It's like market structure is just so important uh, and understanding like a, uh, uh, that you know this is where sellers dropped it okay on, on pretty high volume so we can get a retest back to this 4470 here and and still be sell side from this point onward here okay not from you know reading uh, uh this kind of uh, recent order flow here okay nice cluster nice cluster of buying there all right looking for the scenario for sellers to get down below it now Okay, another retest possibility up here. I'm just going to draw a line in. All right, let's see, let's see if these buyers are just going to try to move it back up here, and then I want to see it fail. Uh, it's, it's set up here pretty nicely for sellers right now to hit it back down to the low here, the swings, 65, and then our 63 area. Yeah, so the order book, uh, you know, we're, we're kind of, you know, we're creeping up here. So testing this kind of higher liquidity up here. There we go. Okay, 72. Now, uh, and we have our line up here as well. Okay, now I'm looking for these sellers to come in. Okay, the order book here, like they should be able to, there's, a, there's an imbalance here in this order book. Okay, there's supply up here. Where's the demand? It's way down here. Where's the, where's the midpoint? It's in here somewhere. So we're looking for a, a retest right back down to it. And then I, I still want to see it go lower. I want to see it test this liquidity down here, 65 to 63. Okay, so we, we covered this uh, the other day, that midpoint, understanding the um, uh, uh, in here, like this, you know, the, the liquidity in here. We came up here and the, um, the midpoint's just around in here somewhere, I think. 
uh, the um, uh, and it, we didn't have an imbalance in the book really uh, you know maybe a little bit in here but uh, uh, you know we're looking for them these guys pulled we're looking for them to come back into the balance uh, and then I want to see them still now test the other side of the range here and the liquidity down at these lower levels here and we're just kind of right, right in the middle still of a, of a of a balanced book. I want to see the imbalance. I want to see this be pulled here on the offer and lowered. And I want to see this be pulled on the bid and lowered. Uh, then I want to see the, the green dots start to come in and really put, or the red dots and push it. Okay. And, and get a nice move back down into uh, uh, after the imbalance. And a little, you can see a little bit of imbalance starting to shape up here right now. Now let's see let's see something happen here. Okay, and then we're looking for them to pull, jump in, and drive it down into these lower levels here. Okay, you know, reduce your risk, uh, uh, keep a tight stop here because you're looking for it to work now. Now this is not a, a trade recommendation. Okay, we don't we don't give trade recommendations. Uh, it's about reading the order flow. Okay, uh, and then start to understand the, the um, behavior of the order flow uh, and then um, uh, to uh, start to develop a plan from that. Okay, when you know you have some sort of edge here uh, and then, uh, you know, and then take your profit down here. That was the target we're looking for. Okay, doing things like that, it can build a lot of confidence uh, and then you'll start to look at maybe different ways of managing that trade uh, and uh, then looking at um, uh, uh, possible ways of um, looking at higher time frames, uh, scaling in, scaling out of that position. Okay, so just keep it really, really simple. Uh, build some confidence in reading the order book and the order flow at your levels uh, and then uh, uh, taking something out of the market uh, and reducing your risk okay, because then we get into more advanced stuff of like okay I took a partial profit maybe I, this is a pullback I got back in I take another partial profit down here but I'm looking for it to continue down to 60 there you go that, that gets a lot more complex and a lot more advanced right away uh, but when you look at things like that I mean my god you know you you can just uh, uh, really uh, uh, optimize your uh, uh, your, your trading uh, performance in your account. Okay, does that make does that make sense? That, that's why we there's so many different ways to go through this. Uh, we just want to read the order flow. Now, what we just covered here, okay, and this would be like you know a, a scalp. We're looking for this to unfold. Uh, from 67, uh, maybe your stop would be up here. Maybe you hide it behind some of this liquidity at 69, right? And then take your profit, pull back, low volume pullback. You know that's a low volume pullback. You look at the buyers compared to the sellers here. Uh, and then we're looking for another move back down into it. Take some profit, or here's another potential short. Take, again, profit. And now move your stop down to break even, and you just got stopped out. Okay, so you made two two trades in here, and you got stopped out uh, at break even. You didn't lose anything. All right, so uh, but you were open for the bigger move to t unfold here and trade down into forty four sixty. It's just one way to play it. There's so many ways to to slice and dice it. Yeah, how how did you? Uh, I can go over um, uh, the. Um, yeah, how, how did we think it was going to break um, and the order book and balance? Yeah, no, no problem. Well, this is what we had. Okay, First off, <coughs> we knew the sellers took control. Okay, This is one of the key things to um, uh, look at. Well, let, in fact, let's even go through this exercise. I think we've been doing this uh, it, like to, to get through some content and kind of having a theme for the day. Uh, so let's let's do this. Um, we'll look at, um, I, I would suggest go back and look at the order book and balance. I'll also answer your question here. Uh, but we're going to look at who's in control in certain areas. Uh, and then we're going to look for, you know, something to unfold uh, in the direction of that control. 
all right so the order book and balance was here we are trading up into and in fact let me let me um let me clear the drawings and let me um also uh go to the heat map settings here uh, and I'm just going to skew the uh, the heat map here, the lower cutoff. I'm going to bring that up and make it a little more stark here to read. All right. So uh, here's where the sellers came in and, and price dropped. It, we were still looking for the drop. And, well, buyers came in. They moved it back up. It's still a low volume pullback. Uh, and uh, they're trading up into this liquidity up here. Here's your imbalance. This is where the liquidity is here. This is where it is down here, right? So at minimum, you could look for a move to the midpoint. Now the midpoint here, you can you can see the three dots there. That's the midpoint. So you know I know where to draw it. I'll just draw it up here. It's kind of like here. I mean at minimum you're kind of looking for that even up at this top edge here. Uh, a retest back down to the midpoint. Now, is there anything else in here? Because at that, at this point here, it's back in balance, really. The order book, at least, is kind of back in balance. Okay, and probably better here because they, they actually pulled and then added back in and then, uh, you know, it's more in balance actually here. Liqu liquidity here, liquidity here. Um, uh, and then uh, we see what uh, what unfolded. Uh, was that uh, more sellers came in here to drive it lower and go for this liquidity in here. And now it's back out of balance again uh, down here. Okay, so where's it going to go? Well, we need to see where that liquidity is. Uh, but back up here, uh, let's look. Midpoint. Where's the midpoint? Okay, well, probably around 68 there, right? Somewhere around there, 67, 68. And we'd be looking for a pullback to that. Uh, if that look, we, we don't really know where that liquidity is here. So uh, let's go forward a little bit. Yeah, so we came all the way back up to this liquidity up here. There's your imbalance yet again. Liquidity down here. Okay, and then where is it up in these areas up here? Well, th these guys have been in the book quite a, quite a bit longer. And we didn't, we didn't trade there. We came right up to it, but didn't quite trade into it. All right. Does that, does that answer your question? Uh, viewers are maxed out. Okay. Um, yeah, I thought, I thought we'd be, no, there should be a, a few slots in there. Guys, I don't know what else to do. We're, we're going to have to, we're, we're outgrowing our, um, discord channel here. Uh, so we're, we're going to figure something out. Sorry about this. Try stream one. Exactly. Uh, so try that. There's still a few slots in there. It looks like we have 96 in here. So you should we should be able to get 100 in there. Okay, after 100, though, it's going to be um, uh, a little more challenging. Okay, Sam Sam might be able to restream for us here. Thanks, Sam. <laughs> Alec, you got 3,500... 3, uh people in the book map <laughs> excellent um all right so anyway you know starting to understand like really what affects price this is our education this is part one of our education like you know we can we went through that exercise turning off a of volume dots looking at skews in the order book here's our skew yet again okay now they're kind of pulling in here but you know it, there's liquidity here and liquidity here where's the kind of balance point it's around 72 and you, you see it shifting though. This is where it, with liquidity, it's it's kind of a, you know, it it works. You you'll see a shift in the order book, and you see price reacting. Okay, so they're likely going to trade back down to the 68 here. Looking for it. And balance is right here around 70. 72 and this is also the volume imbalance so we got two different imbalances taking place here right we have a, yeah thanks sam uh, we have uh, the order book imbalance as well as volume imbalances okay now you, you can look at your uh imbalance uh, uh in the um and the profiles you can even right click in here and split out your data in here 
uh, and look at imbalances this way, which is a great way to uh, uh, look at these trades. And, uh, you know, you can even uh, uh, reset this uh, uh, data in here uh, and uh, look for where there's skews and also the, the transactions. Okay, so we did trade down to 68. Now we have an imbalance there. Okay, bring it right back to 72, maybe 73. Okay, this is the, the area between 75 and 68. Okay, well, we made it back up to 71. So anyway, that was the exercise we went through. Um, let's go through um, the um, maybe uh, uh, imbalances with volume now too. Okay, let's put let's add that into uh, the picture here. Uh, another there's another column I want to go over is um, uh, you know I split out the data here is by the aggressor, so buyers here, sellers here, and you can see that there's more seller or more more buyers actually at this little level here, than there are um, uh, sellers, right? So you know we're kind of heading a little bit higher here. It make, makes sense, you know we see the little bit of imbalance in there. Uh, because of the numbers uh, so um, uh, yeah it looks like they're going to try to trade right back to 75 right and they're pulling there at 75 75 should we should get the move to so there we go 75 76 let's see 70 79 now now this is more momentum it's not really about imbalance this is like just they're driving it toward these areas of high liquidity in here we'll see we'll see here here a little bit coming in at 75 see the imbalance there all right well, let's see if they can, we, we're, we got momentum to the ups. There's more imbalance. So we got the momentum. We're looking for it to trade up into these areas of high liquidity. Okay, because we got more buyers. It's repelling them. It's out of balance and it's repelling them, uh, the sellers, uh, and propelling the buyers. Okay, makes sense. Um, I just wanted to show this other column type in here, which I, you know, I think is worthy, uh, is this uh, volume delta. A column so it's buy minus sell when we just looked at it before here uh, this is um, buy plus sell together and we can split it out into buyers and sellers so we got all the data in here I mean these are this is like a candy store for uh, for you volume profile guys uh, and then you can also look at buy minus sell okay and you can you can open up several insert a new column uh, and um, also in here, uh, let's, let's configure it again and go back to uh, take out the delta. Okay, so we can look at this in here. This will give you some insight, like where where are the buyers taking control in in the in the columns as well? And it's nothing but buying in here, all the way up. Ninety. Now we're looking at ninety-five. All right. Here, here's our, our order book and balance here. We're kind of in the middle, but we still have more buyers in here. So I'm looking for them to trade up to 95. Okay, they seem seem to be, you know, repelling these sellers. So I'm looking for buyers to trade up into 95 here. Or I'm sorry, 85, sorry. Okay, even even a little bit more in here. A little bit more. What's the, what's the reaction? Do we find buyers? We're starting to. They should trade up at 85. Okay, understood. Do you guys see that? You see how you can read and use liquidity here? You don't have to. If we take off the heat map, this is what we have. This is what most of us have been looking at for decades or years or whatever. You don't know that. You don't know that there was that push. Uh, you don't know that, that there's that high liquidity. You can look at your dome or your, your um, order book, uh, which reminds me, uh, Sam, I'll get back to you. I mean, um, uh, Alan, I'll, I'll, I'll show the dome for you and demo that. Um, the dome is great. Like you can, um, if you guys are accustomed to a dome, uh, it is highly configurable uh, here in Bookmap, right? So I, I don't know. I now I, I kind of I, I like this view. 
uh, actually, um, you know, just keep it really simple between buyers and sellers and, and market structure. Uh, and I think you can get a lot out of this view alone. Uh, however, uh, when we add the order book in, uh, you know, we, we can start to look at another element in here that really affects price. This is all based on our educational course. If you guys haven't seen it, I would, I would um, uh, really encourage you to watch part one and part two of our educational course. There's, there's four parts altogether. But one and two will provide this foundation that we're going over. All right. Okay, so let's, uh, let's go through... Let me answer uh, Alan's question here on um, uh, the dome. Okay, so right click in a column here and then come down into trading dome as your, your data type. And you can add in specific columns here or add in the default dome columns. So I'm gonna go with the default and you can see it opens up a bunch of columns in here. Now you can left click hold and drag these around or you know hide them as well, uh, hide the column. Uh, this is where you're, you'll have your trades uh, in here with the buy and sell area. Uh, and um, uh, you have the bid here, you have the ask here, you have price in the middle. I'm telling you, you can just do about anything you want in here. Uh, it's pretty, pretty configurable. So let's say, for example, you want to mimic, uh, insert a new column in here. Let's just do this. Uh, and I'm going to... Uh, just show the um, uh, the uh, buyers here, or let's see the sellers maybe. Okay, and the buyers over here. Uh, however you want to do it. Um, oops. No, I had it right. Okay. Uh, and then you can you can re you know move them around as well, uh, however you like. Okay, so you can really configure the heck out of this. Uh, I'm going to show. I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to show you um, where uh, you can find out more about this. There's some videos on it, and the one-click trading from here as well. No problem. All right, you can open it up uh, and um, uh, set orders in here from the dome. No problem. Just make sure that you either have both or dome here uh, as you're in the trade control panel, uh, and then you set your orders in in here. And you want to be a buyer, you know. Here's your limit. You can you can even uh, you can move it here, or you can move it even here from the. No, I don't. I, unless I have both selected, then I can move it here on the chart as well. Okay. Yeah, it's really really configurable. Uh, you can edit them. Uh, you know you can. Uh, uh, there's just you know all all sorts of things you can do in here. You cancel it, whatever, move it, etc. Uh, minimize these as well. Left click, hold, and drag. Um, so if you guys like to trade from the dome, then then uh, this is how you do it. All right. So I'm going to hide these for now, uh, and I'll show you where the video is for that. And I'm going to turn this into current order book. And let's duplicate this one and turn this into chart range volume profile. Okay, and configure it with uh, bars and I'd like to see bars and numbers on this one. Okay, not on the on the SVP though. All right. Yeah, Alan, there's all sorts of videos in here. Let me show you where those are. Um, uh, it's just go to our YouTube channel um, and um, go into features and components here and then open it up into the playlist channel here scroll down uh, and uh, there's there's a there's a few here um, columns all these columns are down here here's your one uh, number 33 watch this video here number 33 from the playlist okay I'm gonna put it in here uh, and uh, that'll go, go over the uh, the dome settings, but you can also go lower here. Dome comparisons here. There's three other videos in here uh, to watch. I'll give you some insight about like you know how, how what book map is showing and and how to read it. And uh, you know the dome is antiquated. It really is. Uh, you know it was great back in the 90s, 
Uh, it was a new technology to be able to see uh, depth. Uh, but now we can see so much more because we have full depth of market and we can show it on the chart historically. So now instead of just looking at transactions historically, now we can look at order or the um, order book historically as well. All right, guys, let's go back here to the price action. We're seeing some pretty good movement here. Um, and uh, we traded 85. We come back down. Here's our order book and balance again. Back up into high liquidity at 85 again. They pulled here. Now they're adding up here now. We're looking for another order book and balance in here. Uh, you know, if we don't get it, we just might find sellers bring it right back down to... Uh, where, where they uh, kind of broke out from here. So 84 or, you know, uh, some of these areas in here, look at our volume clusters, okay? And the midpoint here, somewhere around somewhere around here, you know, looking for a pullback now. Okay, understood? Do you guys, can you guys see that? You see that we're up here looking for sellers to kind of just to, just to pull back to the midpoint here, okay, of, the, of balance uh, in the order book. And one of the things that, you know, uh, you'll you'll see, I mean, you can go back and you you can um, look this up, but you'll see how there's, you know, a lot of uh, quants um, and financial engineers that studied the order book. Uh, and they, um, uh, this imbalance thing or the, the balance and the imbalance of the order book matters. It really does. I'm not, we're not making this stuff up. They were basing strategies like, you know, serious money uh, on these uh, uh, and, and algo uh, behavior uh, on uh, order book and balance. So it really does matter. It really does affect price. That's why, um, you know, you, you'll hear people say, oh, the, the order, I don't look at the order book. It doesn't, it's all BS anyway. It's not. It affects price. Orders affect price. That's what the market is all about. It's about orders. Uh, so orders affect price. Without orders, we, you don't have a market. Uh, what do I find and define imbalance as? Um, skews, um, and we're just you know looking at areas of high liquidity. Uh, there's more supply up here than there is demand down here. So you know uh, th there's an imbalance here. Right. Where does it, where would it be more in balance? We'll, you know, back down into, you know, uh, in the middle here. Does that make sense? I mean, uh, I mean, you'll you'll see you'll see what I mean. Uh, if, if you look at the uh, in fact, we can even. Um, we can kind of show it in here. There's we can duplicate this column. Boy, this is OK. So we're not going to look at who's in control. We're going to go over order book and balance again, I think, uh, today. Uh, anyway, it's almost been an hour, um, but uh, finally getting to the topic of the day. Um, let's configure this here. Okay, now you can show it aggregate book. You can also cut the book uh, down and look at a, a, a depth here, uh, and then look how you can you can see like on the on the the number here on the top is the um, aggregate 700 700. See how it's balanced right here right now. Okay, for these 10 levels. You'll see where there's an imbalance. You'll see price um, uh, a lot of times react and move to it. Here's an, here's an imbalance here, right on the uh, on the offer. Let's see let's see if we get sellers come in there. We even see it in the in the uh, queue, or in the in the heat map. Okay. But the the buyers took them on on that one. They they traded. Okay. We can also look at the aggregate here like this, and look for these imbalances in here. Okay, you can you can or open up another uh, column like this as well and look at an inside market. And okay, now this is where you get really into the algo territory. Um, those naive market making algos, uh, looking at very very um, efficient, um, and they would be looking at maybe you know I don't know five three levels. Let's just put in five three gets kind of insane and look for imbalances within it. Okay. So, you know, uh, y you'll see it again and again. And, you know, I know this moves very, very quickly uh, here. And this is the S&P. You know, you'll see it better in the bonds. And 
you know, the slower moving markets. But uh, we can go back like this and, and we can look at these imbalances in here. Okay, there's a bit of imbalance here for 10 at least and for these five uh, on the offer. Okay, well, let's see if they can bring, bring it back into balance. Okay, and it came down a little bit. Could, should come down a little bit more. And it does. Okay, now there's still more here and here. So let's see if they can bring it down a little bit lower. And we'd be looking at these previous areas in here. Okay, and they did. Okay, now what happened down here? Eh, still in balance to the uh, on the offer. Yeah, boy, we don't even see a lot of buyers go into it here, uh, and it, and it came back up. That's that's odd. That's odd behavior. Um, we see a, an iceberg in here and some stops as well uh, triggered up here. Okay, yet another imbalance in here. And now it's only 10 levels, you know, so uh, it, it, this is not going to work like 100%. Nothing, nothing does, and we're kind of eyeballing it here. Um, but, uh, you know, we're looking at uh, uh, kind of bigger picture stuff. Uh, and um, uh, trying to trying to get like a I don't know 20 levels 30 levels something like that and, and see if we see something uh, some sort of imbalance in here as well all right we'll play around with it um, uh, yeah no I mean you know boy I, I, I tell you the programmers like the stuff that they've come up with like we're just kind of in these webinars, we just kind of scratch the, the, the surface. Um, uh, there's just so many different ways of looking at the data in here. It's crazy. It really is. Like uh, uh, we can do um, refreshes in here. Um, uh, you know, we can look at uh, quotes delta. We can just look at quotes. Um, we can look at uh, uh, you know, the aggregate, aggregated book here. We can set the depth. Um, I guess we got most out of what we what we see here uh, in these columns. All right, guys. Well, here we go. Now we have what do we have here? We got up up this move up here. We've got a stop run. We've got high liquidity in here, uh, and uh, I'd be looking for uh, traders to trade it right back down. Okay, maybe back down to this balance area for volume at least. The balance area is here. Okay, right here. And we have we have a stop run too. Okay, well, let's see. Do we do we see um, maybe if we get a skew in the auction here and an imbalance, uh, then I'd be looking for buyers to try to trade it back up and through uh, for into and through maybe forty four ninety. Okay, else I'm looking for a pullback here. Anyway, I'm gonna point made on the uh, on the book there, and uh, let's let's bring it back to reality here. Full depth. I don't mean reality, or just like something a little more, um, like less crazy. Um, I mean that that's where you really get into algo territory. But like I, like I said uh, earlier, um, you know you can read it on these higher time frames. Here it is, right? And we're seeing a stop run up into these areas here. And now if we don't see like an an imbalance here, then I'm looking for sellers to come in. I know this is this is blaring that this should go higher, right? It's just uh, it's screaming here. Uh, we see all the aggressive buyers coming in. Okay, looking at market structure, we're making higher highs, higher lows. We should go higher, uh, but we're seeing also something up up in here with the with the heat map. Now the heat map setting here, I'm going to bring it back down to restore, but you can see what I did. I skewed it all the way over here uh, with the lower cutoff to get this view. 
Okay, when we add it back in like this, um, and I need to uh, the dimmer here. Let's bring it back up to full full strength. So you, you know, this is this is what happens. The party kind of like shifts or gets upended here when when you have all of a sudden in here high high uh, demand or higher demand coming in uh, to uh, uh, get to push the buyers up into this liquidity here. Okay. At ends of trends, you'll see this behavior a lot. So maybe we're ending or getting close to the end of the trend here. Okay, at least on this time frame. Okay, and usually what happens is is either these guys pull or they transact, and then you see the order book skew on the opposite side. Okay, higher uh, supply at a, at a lower area, or more supply at a lower area. Okay, all right. If that's the case, and they did pull here, let's see if they can get down to 85 here. And so you can see them coming into the book here. I want to see these guys pull. And I want to see the move back down to 85. That you see see how they're coming in here? And we're we're right back in the middle here between these two areas. Okay, now the, the the point the point in here is like uh, to use this to your advantage. So you know trying to trying to tangle with these algos in here is a losing battle. But when we know that we have a, a bit of a push on an and a little bit of wind at our backs here and we have buyers coming in, you know, we look for that move. Once we start to see like uh, uh, the structure start to change, uh, et cetera, uh, then, you know, or like I was showing in that other image here. Okay. This one here, right? High liquidity. Skew in the order book, skew in the order book. And then finally taken on here. Okay, but they, they trade up into high liquidity all the way up. Yeah, well, let's see if we can get a view here, uh, 50,000 foot view. Not really, not really. Um, we don't have we don't have that behavior. I mean, you can see some in here. There, there's your imbalance here, which propelled, you know, propelled buyers up into high liquidity here. Okay, do we get it again up here? Let's see. So if we do, then they should be able to trade up back up to 95 and maybe 4,500. Anyway, let's just take a, a breather here uh, and come back and look at our higher time frames in here. And what do we see? Boy, we're not missing much, huh? Or we're just right in the middle of the range on this hourly. Yeah. So not missing much structurally here, our 15 minute chart. Yeah, you know, we can kind of look at maybe some of these levels up here. But this is a nice, nice breakout on 15 minute. Okay, where are the wicks? There's a wick up here and maybe some areas up in here. You know, maybe maybe uh, 4,500 is the target here. You know, right there, 4,500. Okay, else, look look for it to go higher. Uh, 44, 45, 12, or 13 up here. Okay, that's where we found the sellers on this 15 minute chart. And this is a strong move out. We're, we're starting to see some wicks, though. Um, let's see. You assume there's some videos on imbalance uh, in Bookmap YouTube. Yeah. 
I would I would recommend though, Alan, uh, just go to the uh, part one of the education. That will show it probably better. Uh, and then and then we'll just see it in here. I mean, because it's important to understand the concepts. Uh, and then you'll see it visualized here, and no no question. All right, thanks, Doug. 40, 44, uh, uh, 400, uh, 49, 15 on the SPY. Let's take a look. High liquidity. Yeah, I love it. I love it, Doug. Thank you. Yeah, looking for these guys to transact. They're going for it. See, see how we can read it in here as well. So they're gonna they're gonna go for it. Like they they want to. We see buyers climbing up after it here. Right. So they 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 want this liquidity here. It's advertising. You know, this is, you want to be, uh, uh, you want to meet some sellers, here they are. Uh, every time you watch those four videos, you pick up something new. Yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, it, they're, it, um, that's, that's, that's very nice to hear, um, that uh, uh, they, they provide uh, some, some good, good foundation uh, for you guys in, in the order flow. Yeah, and then we're just going to go through that stuff here again and again, and and a lot more uh, in these in the webinars uh, here. Okay. And then we can start to look at you know that's why like uh, part four we go through part one is the understanding market mechanics which is essential, then structure, uh, and uh, you know because it goes from basic market mechanics into like a bigger structure and even more higher time frame structure, et cetera. Um, it's fractal. Uh, and then uh, part three is going through setups and um, strategies. Uh, and then part four goes through the confluences and add-ons. Okay, so for example, I, I know a lot of you guys are looking at the sweeps and stop uh, runs as well as like the icebergs. Okay, but that's a confluence, right? It happens... Um, uh, it, it doesn't, it's not trying to generate a signal for you. It's giving you more insight, more transparency into what's going on. Like, look at this massive iceberg uh, here. Wait, actually, it's not that massive. Sorry. Sorry, guys. For today, it's not bad. The bigger icebergs down here. Okay, but look for a stop run above an area. And a move back into the range, you know, uh, that the breakout failed, and we know it's like people getting most, you know, it's it, it not not all our stops, uh, but we can go in and, and take a look at that. But uh, uh, look for it, you know, rejection outside of a range, a move back into the range. Okay, here comes some sellers. Here's the order book skew. Look at that. All right, let's see if we get more sellers in here now. Okay, try to reach our, our 88 and 87 level here. Looking for it. Looking for it. See how they're pulling there? And we're getting sellers. Looking for them to trade back down into this lower level here. Okay, and let's see if we can start trending a little bit on the lower time frame here. Now, it's it. sellers haven't taken control here of this market yet. We don't. I mean, you can see maybe see say that here, but it's it's not that really, it, it's not that distinct. Um, uh, it's kind of it took a little while. It's just some selling that you know drew the market lower here. So it's not really control. In fact, you can say buyers actually took control here and moved it up a bit. Okay, so I'm just looking for it to trade down to the bottom of the range here. Look at the order book here. Okay, so I'm looking for, yeah, bottom of the range. Okay, about 88 here, maybe uh, 80, 87.50. Okay, and our poor guy down here at 85, he pulled. No longer interested. Now, these, 
our order book kind of duped us here a little bit like they pulled and, and they're kind of flipping a little bit pulled here adding here As, this is where you have to be really careful uh, with the order book and, and and a lot of this stuff is uh, you know yeah it kind of be it's kind of treacherous uh, stuff it's um, uh, you know, prohibited behavior all right huge buying huge stop run uh also look at the reaction here stops and icebergs so we have some uh, pretty big icebergs here 640 so about a about 100 no it's not that really that much i'm, I'm sorry uh it's 100 on the stops as well so it's just kind of a blip okay but up into this liquidity here 95 well, even with the skew in here, we didn't even get down to 88, 87. They, they flipped it here. So, and, and these kinds of flips and these kinds of things happen a lot. You know, you know, I have to be kind of careful here. Uh, and, uh, you know, a larger player will skew the book one direction and another. But everything was looking pretty good until then, right? So, you know, in this channel, lower liquidity here, starting to find our sellers. Looking for lower liquidity down here, here, more more of a skew, right? And then they, they, they pulled here and they start to add here and we get our buyers. Okay, and then looking for, you know, 95 or, or higher here. Yeah, um, let's go through that SPY. Um, let's see, Bowie. Uh, so here, here we have our big. This was what uh, uh, Doug looks at. He looks at these. Uh, uh, he looks at correlated markets with the ETF here, uh, SPY and the and the S and P. And and we were looking for this to trade. Uh, Doug pointed it out uh, earlier. Uh, we were looking at, uh, you know, it was it was somewhere around in this area here, I think. And we were looking for the move back up into this 95, or um, I'm sorry, um, 449. And we got it. We got it. All right. Now, what happened after the event? Okay. Look at the sellers coming in back into the range. All right. So where are they going to take it? Now, if we, we, now, and how many sellers are here and did they take control? Yeah. This is where buyers came in right here. We should get a little bit of a bounce here. Okay. Probably back up to 90 or 49 here. Okay, because of this transaction right here. And this is where the buyers came in and moved it. Okay, so it's already pulled back. Now, let's see if we get our, our sellers in here now. Maybe a little bit higher. And then let's see if we get our sellers in here. Don't like it until we get sellers below uh 49 here yeah i don't like it at all until there's sellers below here let's jump back to that s p yeah s p wants and wants this uh wants this liquidity up here it wants to trade to the figure There's our skew, more demand. What's the reaction? It's muted. We should get buyers. We, we're looking for buyers here now. There we go. All right, so let's see, maybe they push a little bit more. And we can get up into 99 and, and, and 4,500. Uh, a few more questions. Let's see. Uh, 4492 is a spot gamma level. Expected to act as resistance. Thanks, Doug. 
I love love your guys' uh, input here. Thank you. I mean, it's really great. Uh, that's what chat chat rooms are all about. Uh, let's see, Sam. What would you like to see to confirm this reversal? Uh, it looks good here, but doesn't play out, and they push higher. Let's take a look. Open original. All right. All right, so this is uh, Sam's image here. So move up into high liquidity here. Okay, up in here and then uh, back and forth in here. So you're looking for the reversal. Well, um, I, I would say, what, I mean, what need what you really need to see is like you, you need to see the sellers, you know, kind of below this area here. Uh, this is where they kind of raise it. And you start to see them start to come in here uh, around this 89 level. You have some exhaustion up here. You do have an order book here. Um, yeah, and what do they do? So this is 11.10 to 11.15. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd be looking for them to trade it back down into like 87 here uh, and, and some of the swings in here. Do, based on this, this looks pretty good. It wouldn't be a, a full reversal. I mean, the buyers are still in control from this point here. So let's see, 11.10 to 11.15. It's 11.09 or so. So you're looking at this swing. Then you saw these buyers come in. Boy, I don't, I don't quite see the same thing you're seeing. I know this is the data. That's yeah, this one here. Okay, well, yeah, I mean, you do, I do see some buying up here, Sam. I, I don't on your chart. I know you filtered some of that out, uh, but but this this is kind of what I see is buyers in here, actually, uh, l yeah, looking for. I mean, I I I see what you you're looking at, like uh, um, selling down below here. I just don't really see significant selling down here. Uh, we get the retest here. I mean, the order book looks good. Yeah, that's true. Um, and um, we made a, a lower high here. Uh, it would be good to see more selling down in here as well. Uh, but uh, this, they need to get through this point here, and they didn't. Uh, and uh, once you start to see the buyer and in, in in them taking these guys on in here, right? Let's see if we got some sort of skew in here, or did they pull? Some of it transacts, some of it transacts, some of it pulls. Now, this is just pure buying pressure. Yeah, they came in down here. Yeah, you know, look, it, it's not a it's not a perfect science, um, of of course, but uh, uh, it's just understanding auction and, and uh, auction theory and in, in, uh, uh, not by volume uh, auction market theory, but by order book in here. Yeah, the way you have it kind of visualized, uh, Sam, it looks, um, well, the only the only thing I would say is that, that this is where they took control in here, right? And is there enough selling in here to, to drive it lower here at this point? Order book looks good, like like you have marked up here. You know, it should, should get the move lower uh, by the way it looks in here. But I look at my chart and I, I don't like it. Uh, in fact, I like this area above here. They need to they need to break it below that okay on on size yeah they just didn't but anyway this this is why we mark up our structures as well okay this is where the buyers came in okay there's the the move outside of it but it came back in and then more buyers up here, and then boom. And then we can do the same thing again and again with uh, market structure. So kind of here and here. Now we're starting to see sellers.
and we're below this this area here and this swing here okay showing some demand in here finding a few buyers okay a little more demand in here Now they should looks like the looks like they're going to try to trade it back to ninety five. So more demand, and we're finding some buyers here. So just just looking forward to to actually this structure here. Okay, keep it even tighter here, and we see the liquidity here, right? So looking for that level. Now we're, we're, we we need to see the break the range here on some size. Even this even this little range here, it's got to be on some size. Okay, and we had some exhaustion here. Here they go. All right, let's let's see the move here. We should get to ninety four and ninety five. Okay, notice notice the order book in here and a little bit of a push. Now this 94 is being real stubborn there. There they took them on though. So let's see if they can go higher. Back to 95. Okay, now how how to use this? Like you know, I I don't think this is really. Um, yeah, I mean you can hyper scalp this. Uh, and and look for a point, point and a half, whatever. Um, but that's not the point here. Um, it's not the the drive uh, uh, in the direction here. Uh, the thrust of of this is understanding imbalances that you can use on other much higher time frames uh, as well. It's just demoing it in real time and showing you like this is how it works. Uh, is it really affects the market and and again uh, to to reiterate the point come back and look at this this is the whole day yesterday uh, from <laughs> 8 a.m. Uh, to 4 p.m. here uh, and look at the order book skews in here 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 and then finally taken on here and they trade th they finally trade through them All right and and where did where did price go it went up to areas of high liquidity okay to test them okay to trade into them all right so anyway uh you know using and utilizing the uh, order book here um uh into your levels in your trading plan and let's let's also take a look here so we didn't quite get up to 95 here we we came a few two ticks away from it um uh, but uh, and we're right back down. But you know that was the direction we we're looking for due to what we saw in here. Um, the um, uh, what was I going to say? The uh, oh yeah, our higher time frame levels. Let's let's take a look. I mean, it's just pretty dismal, really. I mean, this was a nice breakout of the of the 15 minute range in here. Strong strong breakout. This was at 11 a.m. And I would, the first reaction I would have up here around this kind of 78 level here, let's go back and revisit it. 78 here is, I, I would be looking for sellers up here uh, because of the wicks we see in here. Okay, and instead we got we got the breakout. Okay, back up into here and like, boy, there's not, not much shaking up here. So let's see, 11 o'clock. Oh, here it is. Uh, 1045 in our breakout God, look at that buying iceberg in there too Yeah, so 
anyway you can see higher liquidity up here and they they do trade into it a bit uh, and it goes back and forth and then the buyers start to come in here looking for just the move to 75 they, this was we covered this in real time just looking for the move to 75 at that point top of the range in here uh, and then uh, buyers really picked it up now this is what we've been covering for quite a while uh, is looking for a real big distinction in in, uh, in the transactions moving it away from where anyone anyone want to guess what what are we what to see this kind of activity here? Where are they going to move it away from? Well, what why why do you need we need to see this kind of uh, this kind of buying in here? Let's see. I don't think they broke the structure. Eleven oh four low was held. Yeah. So so. Uh, does that help you, Sam? Is that kind of uh, help help you understand a little bit more of what what you're looking for in there in some of those areas? Yeah, great, great. Okay, yeah. I mean, uh, the, it really the, the structure is really really important um, uh, because uh, the uh, it's just like we're covering here on a higher time frame structure and a break of it. Okay, look at the volume up in here. Uh, and uh, they're they're moving it away here. So Alec, 40, 4,500, 405 are major levels. Um, wouldn't short under those. Yes. Yeah, this is where the buyers, they, they're, look at the big profile here. And, you know, look, profile trading, you don't have to be a profile trader. Uh, but what we're talking about is we have a lot of back and forth in here. Okay, let me clear the drawings again and then add it. So this is again what we're talking about, structure. I mean, we know there's a lot and we see, look, look, who, look who took control here. Okay, I'm, I'm going to go through the, um, the exercise here for taking control. Um, ju just, uh, just for today, we'll go through it really quickly. Um, and just kind of a touch on it, but we'll go through it in, in more detail another time. Well, we just have a big trading range here. Uh, and in that big trading range, you know, this seems to be value. Okay? If it's up here, it's too high a price. If it's down here, it's too low in price. Uh, and, uh, you know, you get traders agreeing upon that. Uh, it seems to be a value. Well, look where it got upended. And this is exactly what it takes to reevaluate uh, and look for um, a, a new trading range to develop. This is how you get your profiles. You get a big profile, another bro profile, etc. cetera. Uh, and this is really what it takes to, to lift it away from that area. And you can see, look at the distinction. Look at that volume in here. And it, where did it trade? Up into 85 here. And then it went sideways. But that's high liquidity. It even it even traded through this area in 80 uh, on up to 85. Okay, and then look at look at here, high liquidity coming in at 80 at 80 underneath here uh, as well, supporting it, buyers supporting it. Okay, so uh, yeah, we we got continuation here, and it was still being kind of reevaluated. Look at your profiles now. Okay, so we have a huge big profile and see how trending day, when it starts to trend away from that area, uh, this is what you get, these smaller profiles like this. Okay, very, very, it's just how it works. T very typical. Uh, yeah, exactly, Alec. Alec, you, you've been really learning a lot. It's really great to see. Really great. Um, so uh, anyway, we can, you know, look, this is going to be a little hindsight, and, but it's a good exercise. Uh, now we traded up into 4,500. Um, you know, they, they wanted that liquidity. Uh, they, they got it. Um, and uh, let's, let's see what unfolds up here. Let's look at our higher time frame as well. So boy, our higher time frame, I'm still looking for buyers basically to pull it back up into this hourly chart, looking at 45, you know, 12, 13, maybe even up here, uh, 30, right? 
just just by looking at the order flow and the hourly here uh you know th this is where there's we're gonna have to readjust it here right so bear with me on that um we're gonna readjust it yeah i uh i still like that one i still like that one a lot Okay, this one up here though, we can move that up to the swing uh, as well. Right, so yeah, I'm looking for this kind of zone up here on this hourly. Okay, so we know there's wicks up here, there's sellers up here. Uh, you, you guys can see them. Uh, but uh, yeah, we're looking for uh, uh, it to at least test. So we're looking for here, you know, 45.12, 45.13. Okay, and look, and we see wicks up here, so we're going to assume that there's still sellers up here. Uh, it's really good to hear, uh, Alec. Uh, yeah, uh, take take full advantage of these webinars. That's what we're here for. Uh, so let, let's go through this um, and just we're, I'm just going to mark it up, uh, uh, and then we're going to end end the day here. Um, but uh, <laughs> clear the drawings one more time, uh, and just look at where people or where traders are, are moving the market and taking control All right so we have a nice one here sellers uh, taking it down okay, and then we'll just mark that up in this rectangle here okay now uh it's tested we see buyers above it here uh it fails this breakout fails it comes back down into the range here uh and then it it really can't get below uh, this it goes a little bit below the swing here, but it fails and also comes back up. All right, this is where they move it away, very very clearly. All right, so I would be I would be assuming that since we already have like I, I would mark up a range more or less like this, assuming that you know this is a pretty good range here uh, as well, or you can go bigger I guess, but uh, we. Yeah, we can go with uh, this bigger range, I guess. That's pro that'll probably be uh, better for the demo. Um, but buyers take control. Okay, they're taking control here. They're taking control here. They're taking control here. Starting to look a little different, though. Starting to look a little different. So you're starting to see some selling in here. Also in here. But, uh, uh, definitely, you know, taking control here. All right. So now look at our structure. Okay, we know buyers are, are firmly in control as this is trending up. Okay. Identifying that is really important uh, on whatever time frame it is you're trading. Okay, make sure you you know look to see who's in control in those areas. Uh, that will um, uh, filter what kind of trade you're looking for and how to how to also uh, consider. Uh, uh, managing the risk. All right, so we have the trending market here, and we got market structure. Held the trend line really nicely. So now this is really no different than what we were marking up uh, earlier with the rectangles, but this is just tilted. So these areas are too high. Sellers take it down. These areas are, are too low. Buyers take it back up. Okay, and buyers are still in control. So still looking for them to trade higher here. Okay, until this structure breaks. All right, so it makes sense. So we'll go over it more uh, tomorrow, I think. Uh, so let's see. I think we'll, we'll, we'll call this one uh, imbalances again. Um, I'll come up with something, <laughs> but uh, uh, anyway, uh, let's see here. A few more questions, and then we can uh, wrap it up here. Let me know if you have any other questions. Uh, Alec, okay, let's take a look at your image here. Uh, how to trade spreads are you are you talking about like um 
option spreads or future spreads? So you're talking about calendar spreads. Okay, well, uh, yeah, you know, we, we can take a look at that. Um, and we might even be able to look at the multi-book uh, product for that, uh, which could be really interesting. Um, yeah, yeah, we'll, 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 let me take a deeper look into that, Alan. Um, but uh, I want to go through um, the image here. Okay. And Alec is saying, what are... What are the left to right lines connecting the dots? You're talking about these lines in here? Alec? So 20, 3, 359. Yeah, Alan, you'd be looking at calendar spreads of one month to the next or one quarter to the next. Especially during rollover. Okay, uh, these are your. Um, it looks like it's the um, uh, sweep or absorption indicator here. Okay, so uh, let's see, uh, Alan, go up, go up to uh, your uh, configure add-ons here, uh, and do you have the absorption indicator here checked? Is that what it is? That's what it looks like. No, it's not that. Yeah, take a take a look. It's one of them in here, and then deselect it, and that'll that'll give you your answer. So, uh, and there's some really good information, guys. That that that. Um, absorption indicator and sweeps indicator uh, really really nice stuff uh, being able to um, uh, you know see some areas where uh, you can kind of look at sweeps compared to stop runs uh, you can also look at absorption compared to the heat map uh, or even uh, absorption compared to icebergs so uh, yeah you'll you'll see some uh, some some interesting insights uh, uh, using the combination of those. Uh, another thing here, just to uh, wait for Alec to kind of uh, type up his question. Uh, just wanted to cover this as well. Um, look at icebergs and stops going together here. This usually leads to some, from what I've seen in the past, like it's usually pretty strong trending days. Uh, what it means is people are getting stopped out, but there's icebergs just supporting it, buying right up behind it. They're not buying the other side. So they're still buying here. Even though there's stops, it doesn't matter. They're still, the larger players are still buying. So it gives us some insight, you know, when you, when you see, now order flow rules first. See, see how that, again, down here, uh, and then also here, uh, also kind of in here, they were absorbing, um, uh, are getting filled here before the stop run but anyway yeah you can you can see these kind of working together uh, and um, uh, usually it makes sense uh, usually you see a, a, a pretty pretty nice trending day not not always but uh, uh, it makes sense there people are getting stopped out so what they're still buying All right, so the stop run in this case is not a stop and rejection and there's not someone on the other side here uh, that, uh, I mean, yeah, there's high liquidity here, no doubt about that, right, right in here. We know it transacts, uh, but look at the iceberg here. Here's your iceberg uh, right in here, right in here. Okay, so you see that the sweep of the order book here is your stop run, and they're right behind it. Okay, it pulls back, and uh, uh, they're, they're just sitting here on the bid. Okay, so that's that's a hundred. It's not a whole lot for the S and P. It's it's minimal basically, but uh, uh, there's a hundred icebergs getting filled in here, and we get and we get trend continuation. 
No, I don't. I, we don't have any any um, uh, spreads, uh, calendar spread type stuff for features uh, uh, on our YouTube channel, uh, Alan. Yeah, it looks like Alec will help you out. Great. Yeah, yeah, guys, uh, come up with some uh, some materials in there. Uh, and uh, uh, there's all sorts of stuff out there. I mean, people have been doing it for you know decades and decades. Uh, trading those uh, those calendar spreads. Anyway, guys, uh, we'll wrap it up. Thanks for coming, everybody. Uh, and uh, uh, look for uh, Tom to be streaming here pretty soon. Uh, he'll get in, and uh, uh, he's been doing a heck of a job in there, uh, as you guys know, um, uh, for, uh, God, the whole afternoon. Uh, so some really good stuff in there. Uh, you can apply some of the things that you learn in here as well. Uh, he's But he's going to be going through uh, his... Uh, you know, trading way uh, with uh, using auction market theory and volume profile. Uh, so you'll get a lot more in depth about that kind of uh, trading style. Okay, and here we're going through a little bit of everything. All right, and that's uh, is by design uh, to do that. So anyway, guys, yeah, thanks for coming, everybody. Uh, tomorrow we'll have um, J Trader. So for the first 15 minutes or so, we'll we'll go through. Uh, uh, the futures and, uh, you know, maybe some uh, interesting stuff in here. Uh, and then we will uh, uh, go into stocks once J Trader comes in. All right. Yeah, thanks for coming. All right. Well, I'll have this up on YouTube uh, pretty soon. Okay, guys, take care.